Today we're going to be diagnosing and replacing a front wheel bearing on a front wheel drive Toyota. You can really hear the bearing noise while driving along from the front right side of the car. That whining noise increases with vehicle speed. Now because this bearing is to be pressed into the hub and the knuckle, I'm going to be showing you how to remove the steering knuckle from the vehicle so you can take it to a shop and press the bearing out or use a bearing removal tool. You remove the hub cap. Next we're going to need to loosen this axle nut. So to do that, the axle nut is slightly pinched in this indent on the axle. So I'm just going to use a flat screwdriver and tap that with a hammer to straighten it out. I'm going to spray a little bit of penetrating oil. The axle nut loosened, I can then proceed to back up the vehicle. Sometimes you can tell a bearing is bad when you shake the wheel and there's play. There's no play in this one, but we can definitely hear that the bearing is bad. Now to isolate which side of the bearing is bad, you can jack up the vehicle on either side, put the vehicle in drive and you'll hear the bearing growl. Next we're going to remove the wheel. To get to the bearing under here, we're going to need to remove the brake rotor, the brake caliper, disconnect the ABS sensor, the tie rod, the drive shaft, as well as the ball joint down below. First I'm going to remove this 12 millimeter bolt that holds the brake line and the ABS wire to the strut. And now that that's free, we can remove these lines. Next we can remove this 10 millimeter bolt from the body and then remove the ABS wire. Then one more 10 millimeter bolt where the ABS wire goes into the splash guard and then pull away the splash guard. Now if you pull back the fender liner enough, you'll find the ABS wire. Just squish the tab on the top and disconnect it. With the ABS wire free, we can just unclip this clip from the strut. With the steering wheel turned, we can then proceed to remove the two caliper bracket bolts. And then we can remove the caliper from the rotor. I've used a bungee cord to attach my caliper to the strut. Now we can remove the rotor. This here is the ball joint. We won't need to be removing it from the knuckle but we have to remove it from the control arm. There's two 17 millimeter nuts and one 17 millimeter bolt down below the control arm that needs to be removed. <coughs> Next we need to remove these two 22 millimeter bolts that hold the steering knuckle to the strut. I'm going to use a breaker bar on one end and the impact on the other. Next we need to remove the tie rod from this knuckle. I'm just going to use the pliers and remove the cotter pin. Next we can remove the tie rod nut, just a 17 millimeter. Next we need to remove the tie rod from the knuckle. You never want to hit the tie rod itself because that could ruin it, especially down here where the threads are. But we're going to hit here on the steering knuckle. Use the brute force method and hit it really hard. And then proceed to remove these two strut bolts. Next I'm going to back off this axle nut. It's 30 millimeter socket and you have to use a 12 point socket. Okay, now the only thing holding the knuckle on is the drive shaft, which will slide out, and the two bolts at the bottom for the lower ball joint. So I'm going to proceed to remove the knuckle from the car. Let's free the strut and remove this and slide it away from the drive shaft. Here's a knuckle removed from the car. This here is where the ABS sensor is situated. Uh, we might want to remove it from the knuckle just to protect it from when they're pressing out the bearing. It's a 10 millimeter bolt you just remove here. Now if you rotate this hub and listen carefully, you hear all kinds of grinding and clicking sounds coming from it. That indicates that this is a pretty bad bearing. So here's what's going on. We've got this outer hub that's attached to the wheel. That's pressed into the inner diameter of the bearing here. And then the outer diameter of the bearing is pressed into the steering nut. Now if you come in here with a flat screwdriver and pry up, you can remove the ABS ring. And that exposes the snap ring here. This snap ring needs to be squished together with a snap ring pliers and then removed before this bearing can be pressed out of this knuckle. This here is a replacement bearing I'm using. It's from Timken, but it's got a coil stamp on it. Now at this point, because I don't have a bearing press, I'm going to be taking this over to the local shop and have them press in the new bearing. So here's a quick overview on how the assembly is set up. We've got the steering knuckle, which is this in red here. It's got a lip that holds the outer bearing race in from moving this way. We've also got the inner bearing race which is split into two pieces. The outer bearing race here is pressed into the steering hub while this spindle here is pressed into the inner bearing race. The first thing you need to do is pop out the spindle from the assembly and that's going to take one of these inner bearing races with it. Then of course once you remove the snap ring you use a press to press out the outer bearing race out of the steering knuckle. The installation of this assembly is pretty much the same as removal. You just got to make sure that you don't pop out the lug nuts when you're pressing in the spindle. Here's a couple of pictures I took in the shop. We've got a 10 ton press here with a bottle jack. We've got the steering knuckle on the bottom there with the spindle already removed. So here we've got the spindle in a vise and the inner bearing race is stuck to the spindle. We're just using an angle grinder here to grind a notch so that it's easier to chip out. Here's a closer look at the spindle in the vise with that notch grinded into the inner bearing race. And here we're just using a pick to chip out the remnants of that inner bearing race. Here we've got the ABS and snap ring removed from the hub. This here is the steering knuckle. You can see the bearings there. 
with the spindle and the inner bearing race knocked out. Here we've got a 10 ton press attempting to remove the outer bearing race from the knuckle. Unfortunately this press was not powerful enough to remove that from the knuckle and we had to move to a 20 ton press next door. Here we've got the 20 ton press and we're pressing in the new bearing using the old bearing as a guide. Finally we're going to press in the spindle. We're using a little spacer at the bottom so the lug nuts don't pop out. So here's the new bearing I got back from the shop. It's nice and smooth. No clicking or any sounds like that. This here's what's left from the ball bearing that we got back from the shop. Uh, this is the piece that was stuck to the spindle. We had to cut a slot in it and chip it out in order to get it off of the spindle. Uh, this here is the inner and outer bearing. This outer piece here was really stuck in the hub. This here is the bearing race. It's just a plastic race that holds the ball bearings. And these are the seals. Next I'm going to put in the ABS ring, make sure the hole lines up. Next we're going to install the steering knuckle onto the car. I'm just going to slide the drive shaft in and bring it up over the ball joint and allow the two ball joint studs to capture the control arm. You need to make sure the other side of the car is jacked up so the stabilizer linkage doesn't hamper the strut from being able to move. So now we're going to insert this into the steering knuckle, line this up so we can put in the two 22 millimeter bolt. Bottom one, and here's the top one. Now I always like using anti-seize on these bolts. I'm going to replace the 22 millimeter nut. Torque spec on these is 156. Good time to check the tie rod ends for any play. Next we're going to place the tie rod ends into the steering knuckle. And then replace the 17 millimeter castle nut. Make sure that the taper has been seated. Torque spec on these are 36 foot pounds. And then we're going to replace the cotter pin. And then fold the end of the cotter pin down. Next I'm going to replace the ball joint bolt and the two 17 millimeter nuts on the bottom here. Torque spec on these are 94 foot pounds. <clears throat> Next we're going to replace the ABS sensor into the steering knuckle and then replace the 10 millimeter bolt. Then we're going to replace the axle nut. Torque spec on this is about 200 foot pounds. Next we're going to replace the disc rotor. Then we're going to replace the brake caliper assembly and then replace the 17 millimeter bolts that go into the caliper bracket and snug these down nice and tight. Next we're going to replace the ABS clip back onto the strut. I'm going to tighten up this 12 millimeter bolt that holds the brake line and ABS wire together. Then I'm going to reinstall this 10 millimeter bolt that holds it to the body of the car. And then I'm going to plug in my ABS sensor. Finally, we're going to replace all of the fasteners that hold the splash guard in place. Once you've made sure all the bolts are tight on the steering knuckle, the next step is to reinstall the wheel. If you're reusing the axle nut like mine, you're going to need to put a little dimple in it so that it holds and it doesn't back out. Alright, let's have a listen to how the new bearing sounds like from outside. Now we're driving along on the new bearing and it's nice and quiet. There's no more roaring sound that increases with speed.